reason number two, why might you enjoy keeping your flathead Hudson engine in your Hudson? They're mechanically simple uh, and not just easy to work on. I mean, in my opinion, they're easy to work on. I haven't worked on a whole lot of different kinds of engines, but they're fun to work on. That's all part of the experience for me. You know, I, Dad and I wanted to do a uh, father-son project, and that's how we got started. And we looked at a couple different cars, and I fell in love with, you know, Doc Hudson from the Pixar Disney movie and stuff like that. And I wanted to, I wanted to fix up an old car, and I wanted to drive an old car. And part of that was wanting to have an old car engine, you know. Um, I didn't want like an old car with a new car engine in it. You know, I know some people, I guess you had a lot of options. A lot of people swap in small block Chevys. That's kind of just what you're expected to do a lot of times, but I wasn't very interested in doing anything like that. Um, then of course, people are doing all kinds of things with LSs or like Vortec, you know, sixes or things like that. But, was never really on my radar you know part of part of the cool thing about this car is that engine that engine is just cool to work on and it's it's different you know it's kind of interesting to learn about and exciting to uh work on so one of the things that's really cool about working on an old engine for me is like things like adjusting the valves and and uh tuning the carbs and i've got twin h so you got to synchronize the the two carters and stuff like that and Working on an old engine is neat, you know? You learn a lot and it's simple and... But yeah, very mechanically simple. Very mechanically sound, you know? They're not fragile engines. Hudson built some really, really strong motors and I think the race guys were the ultimate test of that. But uh, they're, not, they're not engines that you have to be afraid of just blowing up on you, at least in my experience. Now, you do have to learn what to do. I'm not saying that them being simple means everything just comes to you naturally. There's a lot, there's a lot of old knowledge, I think. Uh, things that you probably don't have to think about anymore. You know, valve adjustments is just one example. So part of it is knowing what to do, right? Knowing the right mechanical procedures. Don't just wing it. Don't don't just try things and you know end up breaking something or like warping ahead or something totally unnecessary because I will admit one of the reasons that people like to swap in um, not just a newer motor but like a small block Chevy is incredibly easy to find parts for, right? You're not gonna flip open a Summit Racing catalog and just buy whatever parts you want for your old Hudson engine, especially you know 308s that kind of thing. It's just not going to happen. Uh, and so part of that is, you know, you have to kind of preserve while you work on the motor, you know. Maybe you have to make some modifications for longevity, that kind of thing. And a lot of people don't like to fuss with that, but it's really not that bad. You just kind of think ahead. I know one of the things that we did was do everything that we could to make sure we could run it all fuel without having to worry about it. Rebuild the seals, you know, replace all the rubber, the fuel lines, everything like that. Remember, these engines are 70 years old. I don't think there's a single one, well, there might be a few totally original engines, you know, in Hudson's running and driving today, but it's probably not a ton that are totally untouched that have never been rebuilt or had a rubber part replaced or anything like that, so. They all need a little bit of work. That's just kind of par for the course. But when you're in there, when you're doing that kind of work, you can make changes. You can do little things to make it easier to use modern fuels. And uh, you can improve cooling and things like that. So make it easier to own and operate and drive and enjoy without having to just gut the thing and, and throw in something else. Those are the things to think about. No replacement for that. Anyway, I already talked about that. But yeah, simple to work on, reliable, fun and enjoyable to work on. It's a unique experience. 
be smart and uh, join the club you know join the HET club there are parts out there you can get them you can't get them you just can't go down to O'Reilly's and buy whatever you want it's not that kind of project I guess I'll say so if you're thinking about getting a Hudson think about that one of the things that I encountered was just this past summer, I had a uh, crack in my iron cylinder head. That kind of thing happens. Apparently it happens to me more than it happens to anybody else out there, but uh, I was debating whether I was going to try and send it off to a shop to see if they could get one welded up or if I was going to find a new one. And you know, at that point you're playing with, all right, am, am I going to get an old used head and how thick is it going to be? Can I mill it? You know, can I plane it, make sure it's all true, and then reinstall it? Uh, are there new aftermarket heads? Well, no, there is a project underway to make some new aluminum ones, but it's not the kind of thing that you can just go and buy, so you kind of have to weigh your options. By the way, don't try to get it welded. Just go and find an old one on eBay that's thick enough for you to true it up and then put that on. Uh, that's a story for another time. But you are, you're going to be seeking a lot of old parts. And skip eBay, go talk to people in the club. They've got all the parts that you need. There's a lot of great folks out there who are really knowledgeable too, in case you don't know how to work on these engines. So, don't let that deter you, I guess is the moral of that story. 